Hi there, me, your friendly neighborhood, friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter and Crash the Wonderbird. So we're going to do a video today uh, about caregivers and stroke. Now, when I mean caregivers, I don't mean people that are professional. So your developmental, developmental support workers or your um, uh, personal support workers, DSWs, PSWs, like what I used to be after... My last job when I worked in mental health, I was a rehab and therapy support worker um, working specifically with brain injury clients and patients. I'm talking about family members, specifically spouses and partners. Right? So we're going to talk about caregiver burnout um, and caregiver care after stroke or brain injury because a stroke is a form of brain injury. It's, it's acquired, not traumatic. However, the stroke can be traumatic to the relationships and, and we're going to discuss that now so if you happen to be the caregiver or a family member of someone that's had a stroke um, and not the therapy support bird not that he'd qualify in any way i'm going to do a video about that about the trivialization of support animals um so let's just talk about caregiver support um, and how the relationship can change after a stroke, specifically between uh, spouse or, or, or intimate partners. Some of this may also be applicable to close friends and family members. So if you yourself have had a stroke or someone you know is supporting someone going through a stroke or you're a caregiver yourself, um, please stay tuned and watch the video. And if you have any comments, please, I welcome, leave the comments down below. So first off, let me just say some people that are the caregiver of a stroke folk or brain injured folk after their event find the term caregiver a bit discriminatory and a bit disenfranchising, if not disrespectful, because they're not a professional, right? They don't come and go. Um, they don't follow a schedule uh, and they, they're predominantly unpaid. They're the person that lives with, in or around that individual for days, months, and weeks. So we're gonna, I'm gonna include a whole bunch of links down in the description down below so you can see where I got my research. Uh, and keep in mind, the vast majority of stroke folk are going to be 74 years of age on average, and their caregivers are gonna be 65 years of age on average. So I'm going to say something and it's going to come off kind of insensitive. Let's be honest. If you've had a stroke in age 74, you're probably not going to see 84. That's just some realities. So keep in mind if you're younger stroke folk, some of this could get exacerbated simply by the longevity of your relationship because like in my case, I had my stroke under 50. Uh, my girlfriend is stuck with me for a while, right? I, I'm not planning on cack it any, cacking it anytime soon. And now that I've made the 12 month mark, I'm one year post stroke, I stand a good potential of not cacking it, provided I don't stroke out again. So let's just talk about, one, there's a lack of literature. There's a lack of studies about familial relationships, specifically spouses and, and intimate partners of those that have had a stroke or those that have had a brain injury and, and how those people fare. And I've mentioned many times before that when you have a state of uh, state, a change in your state of care, that being either um, you've progressed through and completed a form of therapy or rehab, or you know you've had a change in state of ability, um, again, that would be a change in your state of care. So I'm going to advocate that if you're a caregiver of someone who's had a stroke, that you yourself need to seek therapy. You yourself need to find a support group. You yourself need to seek counseling because you get to see the day in, day out, the nitty gritty of how shitty things can be. And I'm, I'm going to implore you, please, caregiver, partner, spouse, burnout, um, can be hobbling. So if you yourself find yourself in a place 
where you need help and support, please reach out and get the help and support you need. Be that through, like in Canada, we have the March of Dimes, we have the Heart and Stroke, there may be a brain injury association, you may be able to go to your local general practitioner and they'll point you out. Church groups, whatever works for you. I'm not going to say there is one one and only be-all and end-all event that can help you with your post-stroke care and, and the post-stroke care of a loved one. So let's just talk about some of this. So I found um, a few studies and there's very few pieces of reliable data that are specific to caregiving and caregiver related problems after a stroke, right? Um, partners or spouses of those that have had a stroke, there's many things that happen there. There's uh, a feeling of heavy responsibility. There's feelings of uncertainty. Um, you might constantly be worrying about, is your loved one about to stroke out again? There's restraints on social life. Uh, for example, my girlfriend and I went to a birthday party for a three-year-old. Yeah, I know, probably not a good life choice. Um, we went to a birthday party for a three-year-old and it was indoors and the lighting was decent, so I didn't need to wear my sunglasses, but I was wearing earplugs, like silicone earplugs, common garden variety, get at your local uh, drugstore, chemist, apothecary, whatever you want to call it, um, just earplugs. And I had to have those in for the majority of the time because it got really loud. Um, and because three-year-olds tend to be fairly busy, there was a lot of movement. So when we came home, I was I was spent. So you can have, it can have an impact on your social life. I know there have been occasions where my girlfriend and I have planned to do something and I've had to bow out. Or I've had to ask, hey, can we leave um, during the middle of the event? Or I've had to go take quiet breaks for myself. I know she worries about that. And, and I'm sorry. So there have been several studies that have investigated the influence of either patient or caregiver characteristics on what could be called caregiver burden. And that burden changes dependent on many factors. Depends on how, how, how damaging was the stroke? Uh, how long are you in a hospital? How many different hospitals are you in? What types of hospitals are there? Uh, how, how impacting are your deficits and disabilities when you're finally released to home? Are you ever coming home? There is a possibility you're gonna be in a never go home situation. Uh, you're gonna go from the ambulance to the emergency room, to the emergency room, to a stroke unit, to a stroke unit, to a rehab unit, to a rehab unit, to a hospital that spe specially deals with rehab and, and reintegration to a nursing home. And that could be your life. Okay. Uh, in my case, I was in hospital for three days and then came home. Um, and I know that seems a bit odd, but I had an ischemic moderate stroke and that's relatively not uncommon. But think about it. I'm now at home alone. Uh, my girlfriend would come over and she would help out. But being the stroke folk, how much of a burden do I want to make of myself, right? Like, I can't ask you to go do my grocery shopping every other day. I can't ask you to do my laundry every other, like, like there's so many things initially after your stroke that you're, you're going to have to depend on people. And that's not a, it, that's not trying to lay blame or, or trying to point fingers or, or trying to make people feel responsible. It's just the reality. It's, the reality. Can you help me put on socks? Can you help me take a shower? Can you help me toilet myself? Can you help me put on shoes? Can you tie my shoes for me? Can you help me get dressed? Can you help me up the stairs? Can you make me dinner? Right? Like, and that's not even getting into the intimate side of a relationship because I'm not going to discuss specifics here because that wouldn't be appropriate. But just think about those things. You are now infantilized. You're now an invalid. Um, not that you're invalid, you've just been pushed back to a position where things that you were able to do from age six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, you now have difficulty doing at all. Right? 
So I found a study from a nursing journal, and it said there are six themes that the data that looked at stroke recovery and the relationship between the stroke or brain injured individual and their, their spouse or partner, you're looking at experiencing a profound sense of loss. Let's be honest here. The day you had your stroke, the day you had your brain injury, you died that day. A portion of you is irrevocably gone. So whatever that relationship was before your event, it, you're never going back there. Right? You might get close. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say that you will not get close to what you looked like and how you interacted and, and who you were before your event. But essentially, that person is dead. Right? You now have to adjust to a new relationship because you now have that sense of loss. Right? Just think about it. You're stumbling through life. You have your stroke. You have to call friends and family to go, or nurses and doctors have to call friends and family to say, I've had a stroke. They now have to deal with that. Like Now you've got that new relationship after the stroke. Again, and that comes down to what I just mentioned before, because you now have to allow them to do the third thing, take on new responsibilities, such as be your portable memory, um, such as, you know, doing the laundry, such as, uh, you know, helping you put on shoes. Like, again, there are so many things um, that that spouse or partner will now have to take on just to help you, the stroke folk or the brain injury folk, deal with your day in, day out. And, and that changes the dynamic of the relationship drastically. So then you get the, the, the fourth point, feeling the demands of caregiving. Because you've now basically forced a new form of a relationship on them and given them new responsibilities and they've chosen to take them on, they now have, they now have all these, these demands of being a, not only a spouse and a partner, um, but a caregiver, right? And again, depending on how drastic the stroke was, Depending on how, depending on how um, impacted you are because of the stroke, depending on how disabled or not you are of the stroke, depending on how stubborn you are because of the stroke, how much independence you have, how much self-sufficiency you have they now have to take on all of these demands. And those demands may directly conflict with their own needs. So, for example, my girlfriend was, was in the middle of finishing up her master's in counseling psychology. Right? Now, she has to do a practicum. She has to do her, her final capstone uh, thesis project. She has to do all these things and I'm also asking her hey can you go do laundry <laughs> you know makes me feel like a bit of a shit um, and and now she has to schedule my life into her life and, and, and it feels kind of unfair so and now you've now put that other person in a position where they have to depend on others for support because they can't really come to me or you and, and vent or seek guidance about how do I help this person, right? Because I'll be honest, it would be kind of awkward to go to the person that's had the stroke or the brain injury and ask them, well, how, do, how can I best help you? Now, I know my girlfriend and I have had that conversation a couple of times, but I know there's a few key friends that she's had to go to because she's felt the need to be able to, to vent, and I totally support that. So, and then the last one is maintaining hope and optimism, right? How can you maintain a sense of hope and optimism when there are so many unknowns? There's so, there's, there's so much in the way of uncertainty. So, you, you've had your stroke. Great. You didn't die because of it. Great but there's a high incidence of seven-day mortality. 
there's a high incidence of having a stroke and within seven, seven days, you're dead. Okay. You, you then get into things like, well, it's a brain injury. How bad is the brain injury? What will recover? What won't, won't, what won't recover? What will recover almost organically? What won't? What requires rehab and reintegration um, and rehabilitation skills? Uh, what doesn't? Uh, what strategies work? What don't? Like, and because there is no definitive, linear, predictable timeline or, or benchmark of events for brain injury or recovery, you're left waiting for that other shoe to drop. So that being said, there's a lot there to unpack. Like, you have to experience that profound sense of loss. You have to adjust to the new relationship. You're now taking on new responsibilities. You're now feeling the demands of caregiving. You're having to depend on the support of others. And you have to maintain hope and optimism. And I'm actually going to turn this video into a two-parter so it's not turning into a half an hour video. Because I'm not going to be able to, to, to give the other half of what I want to talk about justice. So, so this is going to turn into a two-parter. Um, but that being said, if you are the caregiver, and I mean by caregiver, I mean spouse slash partner, wife or husband, whatever adjectives, pronouns you choose to use. Um, you need to consider your own mental health. You need to consider your own sense of individuality. You need to consider your own survival, so to speak. Right? You need to practice self-care. You spend a, a large amount of time caring for both the emotional caring about and for the one you love, but the physical routine of caring for and of, be that making meals, be that feeding, be that toileting, be that dressing, be that whatever, right? You need to take the time to find a therapist that can help you. You need to take the time to find a support group that can help you. You need to take the time to find resources and avenues that give you a sense of validation and the ability to unpack some of the baggage that you're going to collect while you're assisting someone going through the recovery, the reintegration, and the rehabilitation from a brain injury or a stroke. And on that note, I'm going to start to prepare part two of this video. And if you happen to know someone that's gone through a stroke, or you know someone specifically that's supporting someone going through the stroke, please point this video out to them. They're definitely going to get some value out of this video. And if you happen to either see your, in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being someone who appears to be immediately befuddled, confused, or has an immediate loss of sense of balance, someone who has vision problems, they can't see it in one eye, they can't move their eyes in a certain direction, they only see in grayscale, they see a little dot in the world, someone who has Facial droop, there's a noticeable slackening of the facial muscles. Someone who can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all. Someone who can't smile equally effectively or at all. Someone has slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context. Someone has general body weakness, weakness on one side, or has the inability to stand unaided. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.